Nicholas Montier here, and yes, your realtor could be screwing you over. This is Home with Nick, and we are talking about what a realtor's job actually is. Now, it's so funny, I've done so much research, and I'm looking and looking and looking and looking, and I can't really find anywhere that it talks about what a realtor's job actually is, and it kind of makes the consumer feel like, okay, well, what am I in for? What is your job? I kind of think I know what you do, but I don't really know what you do. Really big video today. I'm excited to put it together for you guys because I've done a lot of research, and again, it's fun that you see the realtor community really pushing for like oh we don't do anything we don't help you look for homes we don't tell you what offer price we don't all of these things because they don't want the liability and then you've got the consumer community going well it'd be really great if you guys would do this this that and this and that and this is what I actually expect of you but there's really no like rule of thumb so I work with a lot of realtors and again I'm gonna go ahead and give you an outline of what my experience has been like so that you can understand a little bit better about what to expect First thing, so they talk about getting pre-approved, okay? Your realtor does not get you pre-approved, but what your realtor should be doing is leading you down the path so that you can find a great lender. Hopefully they've been working with a lender for a while, hopefully they've been in the business a while. Be weary of new agents, not necessarily a bad thing because they've got time and energy for you. They could be an amazing resource. So I'm not against new agents, but I wanna let you know, be weary of their experience with the resources that they provide if they are newer in the business. The next thing, making sure they give you a great lender. So if they give you one lender, two lender, three lenders, again, I'm such a fan of shopping around, guys. So it doesn't matter what resource you're using, shop around. First part, make sure they give you a great lender. They're not there to get you pre-approved, but they're there to guide you down a path to make sure that you have great resources to get pre-approved. Now, again, we're not looking for a pre-qual. We're not looking for a commitment to loan necessarily. We're looking for a pre-approval. That means that somebody's actually taken the time to look at your financial documentation and said, hey, here's what I think you were pre-approved for. Number two, now this is so funny because everybody thinks that a realtor's job is to find them the house. And it's, I've heard so many horror stories of like, well, I found my own house and, and it, the realtor didn't do anything. Well, again, if your realtor didn't do anything, that's a whole different conversation. Not gonna waste anybody's time in this video with that, but we are gonna talk a little bit about the fact that it's not necessarily your realtor's job to help you find the house of your dreams. What do I mean by that? They should be sending you listings. They should be setting you up on their website or some kind of search engine that gives you access to property. Maybe it hasn't yet hit the market, property that's instantaneous. So the minute it goes live from maybe some other realtor, you have access to it. I know you're probably searching on Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, all of these different sites. And there's nothing wrong necessarily with these sites, but they don't always have the best information at hand. And so I do think that getting listings from your realtor is a really great solution to your, to your, to your home search issues. Making sure that that realtor is the sole provider of listings, maybe not the case, because who's gonna be up at 3 a.m. researching property, trying to figure out what's going on in the market? Probably you, because you might be obsessed like a lot of people about finding your future home, and that's awesome, but you might find that home at 3 a.m. before your realtor wakes up at six, seven, eight, or nine, and finds that actual house again for you as well. Now, apart from finding a home, there's a lot more that goes into it. So let's say you find that house at three o'clock in the morning, good for you. Then you go ahead and send it to your realtor. It's your realtor's job then guys to do research for you. And this is where the realtor earns their commission. And I cannot stress it enough. They earn their commission. They are going to be running comps for you. They'll be looking at comparable properties and saying, Hey, listen, this house sold here, but this house, this house, this house, this house, this house, this house, and this house, all the comparables sold for this. And so what they're gonna do is run an entire comparative market analysis on that home and whatever list price you saw it at, let's go ahead and figure out what an offer price for would be because is it overpriced? Is it underpriced? Are there multiple offers? Is there no offers? All questions that have to go into an analysis for you to understand, hey, if you wanna write an offer, all of these things have to actually happen beforehand so you have the best estimation of value. Now again, I know you're out there, you're on Redfin, you're on Zillow, you're seeing Zestimates, you're seeing uh, Redfin estimates, you're seeing all kinds of sites because they have these algorithms that run values. Don't trust those values. Guys, those values are so off so much of the time and I know that Zillow's got presentations on why it's accurate and I know Redfin has presentations probably on why it's accurate. It's not accurate information. Trust in the data that comes from individual home sales. Do not trust in an automatic valuation. I've had too many issues with those. They're wrong on my current house I'm sitting in right now. They're wrong on my rental property. Trust me, they're wrong. 
So apart from running market data for your property, they also need to go ahead and look at school information. You know, they've got access to market data that's even further than what you have access to. They can look at average price per square foot, they can look at days on market, all of these other things, and look at the trends and different graphs that are usually provided through a set of tools through their local association. So again, let the realtor earn their stripes, let them walk you through what the valuation they feel in their opinion would be, because likely they know that community, or at least they're familiar with it, and they're probably gonna know a trajectory of what's happening in the market market to give you an up on writing an offer and making it competitive. And the last thing when it comes to finding a home, if you're concerned about schools or anything of that nature, if you have children, I know my friends who have kids are super concerned about school districts and whatnot. So again, making sure that that realtor provides you with school information or at least a resource to go to for school information. A great website that's super generalized is greatschools.org. I'll put it in the description below. Don't worry about it. But again, giving you some school information might also be a fantastic resource that that agent can provide for you. So now you found that fantastic home and the next part of this is writing that offer. So again, like I told you before, making sure that that realtor's job is to prepare an offer for you. I hope you've gotten a copy of what an offer looks like ahead of time. If you looked at an earlier video of mine, top five things you should do, get a copy of your local purchase agreement and understand what that looks like before you actually get in there. I did a whole video on contingencies. You can watch it. I can put a description and the link in the description down below and go from there. But at the end of the day, making sure you understand that agreement, that agreement is like a roadmap for how the next... 20, 30, 45 days is actually gonna look for you. So understanding that agreement, having your realtor walk you through it is definitely part of their job. And then again, taking that market comparable data and comparing it with that offer price that you guys wanna put together and making sure that all the terms in that agreement you're comfortable with and that they've walked you through what the terms in that agreement actually mean to you after you've decided on what you want and how they affect you, I think is a crucial part of a realtor's job. Now remember, we don't know what kind of offers are on the table necessarily, right? As the consumer, we don't know. And we don't necessarily know how long that house has been on the market unless we found that little days on market tab way in the bottom corner of the screen. So again, relying on your realtor for their best estimation of where your offer sits. Again, negotiating that with that seller selling party and getting that accurate details and information from that listing agent or even the seller to be delivered to you will help you give a the best estimation of value. And I think that's another key role that your realtor plays is being that communication guard for you to really help you understand what's happening in this transaction or in this future transaction and how can I get the best deal and get the best bang for my buck. So the next two kind of go hand in hand, but the next part that I want you guys to do, and again, it's on my top five things a buyer should always do, get a fantastic home inspector. Again, just like the lender, I feel like your realtor should have vetted somebody in their sphere that they use all the time for home inspections who knows that they're gonna be a fantastic resource for you. So another great value that a realtor brings to the table is that resource list. And again, a home inspector has to be on the very, very top of the resources that they use on a daily basis. So having not just one, maybe two or three different inspectors that they work with, interviewing them yourself so you can protect yourself. And again, asking them simple questions like, are you licensed, bond, and insured? Uh, insured? Are you, have you been in the business a long time? You know, what do you normally inspect? You know, some inspectors do commercial specifically, some inspectors do condo specifically, some inspectors do all of it. So you wanna make sure you're finding somebody that's key for you and it can help deliver on the niche that you're actually inspecting. That's a crucial thing. So the next one kind of goes hand in hand. And again, that's where you wanna make sure that you have the agent at your home inspection, okay? So attending the home inspection is crucial. If they're an agent where they got the offer accepted and now they're nowhere to be found, that's a big red, big red flag for you. You need to make sure that your agent is at that home inspection with you because they're gonna be able to digest that information that's being delivered by that inspector a lot better than you can because you do this maybe once, what, every three, four, five, six, seven, ten years. They do this all the time. So having that agent there as a buffer so when they say all of these issues, your realtor can start helping you create a path or a system to where I know, hey, these are some repairs that I really need to be concerned about. Hey, let's talk about these repairs or hey, I don't know what this means, what does this mean? And your realtor can be that resource for you to then move on to getting specialists out the property, whether it be plumbers, electricians, foundation specialists, roof specialists, all that jazz. They're gonna help guide you on the best path when it comes to that. So having that realtor there at the home inspection is crucial. I think you should be there too. But again, if you can't make it, at least having your realtor there is highly critical. 
So again, that kind of leads us into our next point, which is again, that realtor has now gotten you into escrow. That realtor has now gotten you into a home inspection. We now have a list of things that we're concerned about. What comes next? Another negotiation round. This is where you need to have your realtor fight for you. And I think the biggest mistake that happens here in my experience is the communication is not super solid. And what I mean by that is, remember that if you're asking for something to be fixed on this property, likely, not always, there's been a seller who's lived in that property for a long time or at least a few years and is an emotionally attached to that property and why this is so critical for you to go ahead and be gentle about this is you're probably going to ruffle some feathers if you're asking for things to be done. Not always, but I would suggest having a really good form of communication and what I mean by that is evidential communication. When you're going ahead and you're writing up a request for repairs or asking for a credit on a property, let's say the plumbing's bad or the electrical's bad or the foundation is cracked. Getting an actual estimation of what that item would likely cost to repair is a lot better than just saying, hey, fix it. Hey, fix it. Hey, I don't like this. Hey, do this. Making sure that you have a very soft, gentle approach because again, you could likely offend that seller. And again, we don't want to offend anybody. What we want is this house to be in good shape so that me and my family can live here safe and sound. That's really what we're trying to do here and always come back to that. We want this house to be safe and sound for our future. And again, I think there's a couple of best practices. So one, getting invoices and getting um, detailed itemized lists of what actually needs to be fixed and why. Maybe writing a letter or a buyer's letter. You probably wrote a letter in your offer package saying how much you love the home. Restating that in another letter would probably be a really good idea and at explaining why you're concerned about these items in the home. Um, and then lastly, making sure that your realtor understands your position on what your most, most critical items are versus, hey, it'd be great if we could get these fixed, but it's not the end of the world. We could do them over time. This next one is gonna be, I think, the most critical. And again, it's coming back to what your realtor does, right? Your realtor's job, and that's following up with your lender. So your realtor's kind of like a puppet master. They are making sure that all of the jobs in place are happening and that you're being taken care of because again, they are your fiduciary, right? What does that mean? Following up with that lender every other day is probably not an underestimated amount of communication. I think that you need to be following up with that lender constantly. As long as you've provided your financial documentation to that lender, you've filled out your application and you've been on top of it with your lender, hopefully that realtor is following up and making sure, hey, it's okay? Okay, great. Hey, it's okay? Okay, great. Hey, it's okay? Okay, great. Hey, are we ready for docs? Hey, do we have loan approval? Hey, hey, it, they're going to be obnoxious. And again, that's only to benefit you guys. And Because remember, we don't want to go through all of this just to not have the deal closed. Close. We want to go through all of this so that we have great communication, we have a great closing, and you are super happy at the end of it. What does that mean? Your lender needs to be communicating with your realtor because they're like a dynamic duo that really gets this job done together, not apart. And the last thing that they probably do that I think is super crucial is they go ahead and finalize your closing. So they're gonna go ahead and wrap up all the loose ends. They're gonna make sure that you get your keys. A realtor's job is kind of like to put a nice bow on it at the end of the day and make sure that everything has happened in according to how it's supposed to happen. That all of your closing costs and everything have been identified. That you know exactly how much money you're supposed to wire to escrow at the very end of the transaction. That your lender again has everything they need. Escrow has everything they need. The title company has everything they need need to record. There's so much that happens and again there's so many different things that take place in the real estate transaction and that's why you need to make sure that you have a realtor who's a master at logistics. Keep in mind a real estate transaction on average employs about 22 different people. That's right, 22 different people. And again, your realtor should be at the base of all of those different jobs and making sure that everybody's doing what they can do. So when I say does a realtor earn their commission or what is a realtor's job title, a realtor does a lot of things and it's hard to put them all into one video for you today, not to mention that they play kind of like a part-time psychologist, kind of like a part-time sales rep, a professional negotiator, master of their own company of different, different facilities and tools and technology to help benefit you. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes and I think when we hit, sit there and we battle a realtor on, you know, what do you do or what's going on? You know, make sure that your realtor is doing the things in these videos, but also know that they are working hard for you most likely. And if you find that anything in this video was like, oh, hmm, they don't do that, that's probably a red flag because this is at the basis of what a realtor should be doing to benefit you. Again, guys, is your realtor screwing you over? I don't know. But at the end of the day, I hope this video has been helpful to where you know exactly a little bit about what a realtor is supposed to be doing for you. And hopefully you were listening today and you were like, huh, 
I didn't know that. That's something I'm gonna ask them about. Or hey, in the future, now you know exactly what to actually question people on or question realtors on and know a little bit more about the process. Again, this has been Home With Nick. I'm Nicholas Montier. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Again, please subscribe. It does us a world of good if you subscribe. Hit the notification bell or the like button there. I would super appreciate it. And any comments you have for us, leave them below. Thank you so much for your time today and I'll see you next time.